It's Thursday. It's 8 p.m. It is time for Kitchen Party. Yay! <laughs> Kitchen Party is brought to you by Bakespace.com. You can visit the website for more information, recipes, and links to all of our past shows. At Bakespace.com, you'll also find our iPad app, Cookbook Cafe, that allows you and your organization to create and sell an e-cookbook containing all your favorite recipes. You can also submit your recipes for inclusion in tonight's cookbook, and we'll have a link for that a little later in the show. But now, South by Southwest is over, although some of us are still feeling the effects. Uh, but now it's time it, to it get the... It is not over. It <laughs> it's is time so to not get over. The... Kitchen Party started as founder and CEO of Bake Space. Blah, 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 blah. Yay! Blah, 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 blah. That's how I feel like. I actually feel like when I talk, I'm like, hello, I cannot talk any slower or faster. Have some I more coffee, Babette. Have some I'm more coffee. Residually hungover. I from like five days ago. <laughs> I am trying to cope with the the uh, the Austin shuffle, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, South by Southwest. The interactive is done, but the music is still going strong, people. Sure. Uh, Jeff just joined us in the room. Woo, Jeff! Yay! Yeah. So why don't we do this? Why don't let's let's everyone introduce themselves so that the audience can know we are live on the web. If you have a question, use the hashtag Kitchen Party on Twitter, or follow us on Google Plus, or go to Bakespace.com/news or Bakespace TV. Wherever you are, we will find you. So I am Babette Pepe, the founder and CEO of Bakespace.com, Cookbook Cafe. Jeff is at a bar, so let's let Jeff go first. Jeff, what are you doing? I am at the loudest Irish bar in America, which is saying something. Um, I'm at a place called Raglan Road in Orlando, right out of downtown Disney, and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day early, everybody. So, Douglas, do you want to introduce yourself? And tell us about your cool mug. Oh, but, uh, yes, I am Douglas C. Welch. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, there. <laughs> I, I want to get up into the little Irish step dancing. I'm just... Uh, hey, um, Jeff, mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Find the button, Jeff. Find the button. Let's see. We have never done this before. Oh, oh that's, part of the wonder, that's part of the wonders of live stuff. I love it. Anyway, I'm Douglas C. E. Welch, uh, podcaster, blogger over at DouglasCWelch.com. E. Yes, I was showing off my gardener's notebook mug. That's for one of my podcasts that I do. Uh, I blog on gardening, food, technology, careers, techno uh, 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 new media, and more over at DouglasCWelch.com. E. You can find out everything about me, probably more than you ever wanted to know over there. Renee? Hey, I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I work across a number of sections, including food, TV, and health. And I'm happy to here to get my buzz on. Woo! <laughs> Speaking of buzz and coffee, uh, <laughs> Steve, you want to introduce yourself first? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm Steve Williams. I am co-founder, co-owner of Chameleon Cold Brew. A uh, delicious cold brewed coffee bottled Ooh. beverage that everyone seems real excited about. <laughs> and I also seem to be the only noob wearing the gaming helmet for this whole thing. You, you, you look normal to me, Steve. I don't know. It's, it's, remember, magic missile, magic missile. Magic, no, no. <laughs> heal me, heal me. Okay, well, moving. <laughs> Great. Obviously, Renee and I are like, um, we have no idea what they're talking about, but it's probably some like Dungeons and Dragons geekathon thing. So we're just gonna let that slide. Yes. Under Diablo the rug. Three, World of Warcraft, you know, Call of Duty, any and all of those things. I don't know what games he plays, but I, I have some of the vernacular of all of them. <laughs> hey, OJ. I keep calling you yes. OJ, but what is your real name? Uh, my name's Otis, but a lot of people call me OJ. That's fine. So uh, I'm Otis Williams. I'm director of marketing for Chameleon Cold Brew. Uh, Do you like being called OJ? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I like being called all <laughs> kinds of things, but uh, but OJ or, uh, or Otis is fine. So. Okay. <laughs> Wait, Steve, did you just say he prefers the juice? He prefers juicy. Juicy. Oh, juicy. Okay. There we go. You know what? We can do juicy. We can do juicy. That works. And so it begins. <laughs> okay, that's been real for me. <laughs> so I should I should give you guys my kitchen party peeps a little bit of back history. Now in 2010, uh, we were 
producing our Tech Munch conference in Austin, which we just got back from, by the way. Um, and there was this cool company who emailed me, and I don't know how you guys found out about us, but they're like, hey, we got this coffee. It's cold brew. Can we bring it to your conference? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's 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 bring it down. And uh, I don't I don't know, but it was. It was a thrill. People loved it. Whole Foods, the people who were working there, they're like, this is so damn delicious. So Steve and OJ, do you guys want to tell us a little bit about how, how this came about? What were you guys doing before you started the coffee company? Uh, Steve, I'll let you go first. Yeah. yeah, I have been either working or owning coffee shops for about 15 years now. And that whole time I've been cold brewing coffee. And to me, cold brew is just a much better way to drink your coffee because you don't get the oils and the tannins, so it's a much less acidic, much less bitter end product than hot brewed coffee. And uh, Chris Campbell, who is actually my partner at the time that we found you guys at Tech Munch the two years ago, um, he and I were just looking for something to start together, and that's what I sell the most out of in my current coffee shop is cold brewed black coffee. So we started bottling it, and here we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, had, oh, go ahead, Otis. Uh, no, no worries. Uh, so before uh, before I jumped on the Chameleon, I actually worked at Google, and Chameleon Cold Brew is the coffee they serve at the Austin Google office. So I got really, really hooked on the product, and uh, and was just tweeting about it, and met Steve through it, and uh, and kind of wanted to get involved. So it's been a lot of fun, though. Okay, so you guys have the same last name, right. But you are not related. Turns out there's a lot of Williamses out there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who knew? I was thinking it was Steve's brother. I was like, oh, you guys are related. Sure. Now, I mean, this, though, with that. But, you know, <laughs> uh, they are brothers in coffee. Brothers. Right. They're, bro yeah. they're brothers in beards, no? Yes, yes. Oh, they're the starter beard. So. Jeff, Jeff, you got. Oh, actually, it, we are now, all the males are bearded. That is good. That's good. Yes. First yes. time I think that's happened. The most trustworthy of, uh, of hangouts. Yes. <laughs> Beards breed trustworthiness. That is <laughs> so, OJ, is that weird that you're on a Google Hangout talking about Chameleon when you worked at Google Plus? No, yeah, I did this, this is so every meta. single day. Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. So. <laughs> well, hopefully this will be your favorite Hangout ever. Uh, it already is. Already is so much. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so Steve, so you decided to make, I mean, what was the, where how did you jump from, where, how did you find your first recipe? How did you figure out how to work, how to make this work? Well, honestly, I when I first started working at my first coffee shop, they were already cold brewing their iced coffee there, and I didn't really like the blend that they were using, so I just worked with the roaster over the years that I got to be good friends with and just came up with a blend that I really liked. I was like, I like these chocolate notes. I like it to be smooth. So we just kept working that together, and then five years ago, we came up with the perfect blend, which is Chameleon Cold Brew. Now, speaking of chameleons, should we taste one of them right now? Since we yeah. the new like, ones, we done yes. started. We done yeah. started by that. You again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're way behind. This is what, like number ten today. Caffeination. <laughs> and Steve, how did you get started on cold brew? I mean, if you're around hot coffee all the time, isn't that kind of almost sacrilegious to kind of go in a different direction? How did that happen? Uh, you know, honestly, it started messing up my stomach so much I couldn't drink hot coffee anymore. Mm. So. Yeah, I just, the cold brew didn't do that, so I figured out why and, you know, started running with it. And why is that? The oils and the tannins in the hot coffee, there's not nearly as many in cold brew, so you don't get nearly as an upset of a, t a stomach. You're so there's something about that heating process that pulls all of those out and makes them... Yeah, the hot water melts the oils, mm -hmm. and cold water and oil don't mix very well together, so not nearly as much comes out in the end product. I or will say I don't normally I drink about. my coffee black, and both of these I have a hot I have a hot cup here, and I have a nice coffee here made with one of the other uh, <laughs> mixes, and I will be up all night just so you know. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a twenty-four hour hangout tonight. Yeah. Uh, Which one, one are we? Things, Sorry. Oh, this is the one of the things I noticed immediately. And I was talking with uh, Steve a little before we started. Is is I don't normally drink my coffee black. This stuff I can drink black with no problem at all. It reminds me of when I'm uh, when we're visiting family in Sicily. It's one of the few places I will drink black coffee. I will drink straight espresso uh, because it is brewed very well and it's a fine coffee there. Uh, but this is this is a a bit enlightening for me. I I may have to uh, investigate this a little further. Down the road. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Jeff, what about you? Have you, uh, you probably don't have the coffee with you at the bar, huh? No, I threw it all down the past couple of days, so it's uh, it's gone. But you know, I wanted to ask them how they found the cold brew because it, it started seeping in over in Tampa a little bit. There were a couple of places that were doing it over here, like almost kind of like a, a you know an experiment or something like that. And I tasted it and it kind of blew my mind. Tell me what how it was that you guys found out about it, and then how did you transfer that to actually making it a, a product? So uh, I'll, I'll jump. The first uh, cold brews I was tasting, so I was doing a lot of uh, consulting work and outside sales work in Austin and, and jumping from coffee shop to coffee shop. And when it gets to 115 degrees here in Austin, uh, it's really hard to drink hot coffee. So, uh, so I switched to iced coffee and, and big, big fan. Uh, but some coffee shops were significantly different than others, and it was the ones that were doing cold brew coffee versus uh, hot brewing and pouring over ice. Uh, and then whenever I started at Google, uh, I, I found this product. It was refrigerated, 32-ounce uh, bottles of you know, pre-brewed cold brew coffee and just gave up on everything else. Like we, Me and my friends at Google would actually... Uh, have contests on who could pull the f perfect espresso, but I would always just give mine away and then uh, <laughs> and then pour a cold brew afterwards. So it was, it was a lot of fun. So, hey guys, on Twitter we have a we have some interactions. Uh, Mitch Jenkins, who watches all the time, thank you. Can thank we you give Mitch. her a woo? thank you? Thank you. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of, well, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, yeah. we, uh, she has a question. She says, any tips, tricks for cold, and just so you guys know, Steve and OJ, uh, our audience is super important to us, so if we're in the middle of talking and uh, one of our audience member has a question, we usually, like, stop what we're doing, we answer their questions so that they can sort of get on with their day, um, and so they don't have to wait around to the end. Uh, sure. So she wants cool. to know, any tricks and tips for cold brewing at home? Oh, yeah. So the main thing about cold brew that people don't really understand, and it's part of the reason why we've come up with these two new flavor profiles, is that the kind of coffee you use is integral into how good your end product is going to be. Right. So then beyond that, you want to control the temperature of the water going in, so you want to use cold water. You want to use a constant temperature throughout. If you use it in your refrigerator, say French press in a refrigerator, you uh, would do it for about 24 hours, 24 to 26 hours, and then you would do... You want to go. You want to mix a ratio where you wind up with a pound of coffee to a gallon of water. So if you're doing a quart, you want to use a quarter of a pound of coffee to a quart of water. Does that help? That's basically it. Yeah. It helped me. Yeah. It when I was me. doing uh, when I was doing cold brew at home, I would uh, put the coffee grounds in my French press and leave it out on the counter overnight. Uh, as I didn't, you know, I was using a lot of coffee to water ratio, and then in the morning I would just press the uh, the French press, and that, that would be my cold brew. So. What type of grind do you guys use for this? A, a fine, uh, coarse, in between? I use a coarser grind. Just keep the dust down and the, and the leavings and stuff like that? Mm hmm It helps filter everything out. Yeah, I know with the French press, you got to be careful because you can get a lot of, a lot of dust, right. what I call it, at the bottom yeah, of your Sediment, cup, yeah. Press. Yeah. Now, no, is actually, there an alternative to the French press? Let's say you don't have one. Is there another way? Could you kind of jury rig it with some cheesecloth and a and a strainer, or do you just have yeah. to have a French press? No, you could easily do a cheesecloth. Just pour it through a strainer and a cheesecloth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could totally do that. Mm. Especially you if you're doing sh larger batches. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just want to make yeah. sure you're you know it's well well mixed up. You want to make sure all the coffee is hitting all the water. Mm. Hey, just so you guys know, on Twitter we have Aaron J. Bailey who retweeted us, Alec Hartman also retweeted us and favorited the tweet, and then also Sean Adrian. Thank you for watching. Thank you, guys. Woo! Thank you. Hey, I started, oh, I was going to say, I started drinking the Wilder coffee. Is anyone yeah. drinking that right now? Yeah, I, I have that as the iced coffee here. That's the one I'm drinking, iced. Yeah, Douglas, do you, do you want think? to continue what you were going to say, and then I'll ask about this flavor? I was just going to go because obviously, you know, if you're cold brewing at home, that's one thing. You got a French press, you got a, you know, a, a, a pot, you maybe got a five gallon bucket if you're really into this. But I, I, what volumes do you guys have to cold brew in to produce a product that goes into stores like this? Hundreds of gallons a week. All at once? Is it oh, a, all at once. It's a yeah, huge vat. So you have a huge yeah. stainless steel vat, I assume, that all this that goes is, into? That is yeah. basically it, yes. Yeah, so and that's just for Steve and I. 
Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, I assume that drinking up your own profits is a definite problem that can, that can sometimes happen there. So, are you working with like wine making equipment? Is that kind of the stuff you're repurposing? Yeah, we are using some wine making equipment actually. Yeah, and then a bottling line. Yeah, the stainless steel comes to mind as you know fermenting white wines or whatever, or, or, or uh, Zinfandels and stuff like that. They offer right, stainless right. steel for that. So, yeah, I guess it would that would all work together. Um, and let me ask you this: on a green side of things, on the on sustainability side, what do you do with all the coffee grounds? Coffee grounds, we try to get to local farmers because they like to use it a lot. But then we've also had people calling us um, recently because we're getting to heavier volumes. The, to make those pressed starter logs, they want to use the grounds oh, for that. Yep, yep, we have yep. a guy that uh, does the mushroom box things that they're going to use them for that. So we're trying to find, we're trying to repurpose them for sure. I love it. I, I use coffee grounds. All my coffee grounds go into my compost pile. I, if if I'm walking by a, <clears throat> a particular coffee place that shall not be <laughs> named, I will uh, sometimes reach in and grab a couple of uh, bags of their used coffee grounds to, uh, to to add to my pile here. So that's why I asked that question. Yeah, it's so great for gardening. Oh yeah, you it know, is some wonderful stuff. I have not had any luck with that for gardening. I have added coffee grinds. I'm like, oh, I'll do that and I'll be all cool, or whatever. It has not worked at all. What, <laughs> am I, what, 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 am I it, what, what are you trying to do with that? Because what I mean, honestly, what I'm using, mine are composted in, so you can't. You're not even seeing the coffee grounds when I'm done here. They go through my composter and it comes out as black soil, basically. Are you just That's dumping them on the plants, Babette? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's where I'm going wrong. <laughs> I'm like a little like, bit on plants is okay. Let me put let me put on my my gardening hat for a moment. Uh, putting them on plants is fine. I will dump them in the garden just so I don't want to make the walk to the compost bin. But yeah, it's better if they they're 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 really good conditioner over the soil if you mix it in with the rest of your kitchen waste and stuff like that. They are considered a brown waste, not a green waste, and and uh, so it, you want to have a balance between. Hey, speaking of gardens, I just want to say the WI Veg Gardener is tuning in from Twitter again. Welcome. Hello. And she, says, she says, gardeners love ground coffees. That's it. I mean, that's, just, that's it. And I, I'm totally, I guess I'm not a gardener. I think that's my problem. <laughs> that's where you I went would, wrong. Yeah. Can you, do you have room for a compost bin at your place, Babette? No, absolutely not. I have, I have tried to make... Um, I have this like very small strip of grass. Actually, no, it's dirt. And like four times I have tried to put grass in in that spot. And a few times I had it. It was great. But then it was so random. Like it'd be like dirt here, grass here, dirt here, grass here. Don't don't um, go grass. We'll so talk. We'll talk. Whenever, uh, when I was doing the com I used to do a worm composter, and coffee grounds worked excellent in that as well. Yep. So and because I didn't have a lawn, so uh, it was indoor composting. It was really great. So you might try that. Yeah, that's, that's a Let easier. me ask you guys. I, I know uh, Stephen mentioned something before we started the show, but um, I was looking on the website that you have a whole uh, area of where you are currently available. Um, why don't you let people know where they can find your products? Uh, I, I know I'm going to walk about three blocks away to my store and pick some of this stuff as soon as this stuff is gone. Um, why don't you let people know where they can find this, the, the products? And, and then Stephen mentioned there might be, you might be in a new area of the country as well. Okay, um, Whole Foods is our largest um, retailer at this point. Uh, Wegmans in the Northeast is very big uh, for us. We're uh, going to hit HEB soon in, here in Texas. We've got Andronico's Markets. We've Central got Market. Central Market here in Texas. We've got AJ's Markets in Arizona, I believe. Um, PCC Markets in Seattle. Oh my God! So it seems it's more on the it's more on the not your typical grocery stores. These are going into stores that have a little more, a little more thought about their food, a little more thought about what goes into the food and stuff like that. We're very big in the natural chain, yes, that's for sure. Natural oh, chains. natural markets, natural grocers. That's, grocers, that's a right. big one. What do you do that 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 attracts those businesses to you? I think we're organic, fair trade uh, products. So I. I I assume that's what they like about us. We package it in a glass bottle, so uh, we yeah, determined like early on, yeah, that the glass was more recyclable and more reusable than a plastic bottle. I I so have uh, I have some limoncello and or some vanilla extract that's probably going to end up in this bottle when it's empty. <laughs> so thank you very much that's for great. providing for for. Uh, Furthering my my alcohol habit there. Yeah, yeah if, that's good. If you would tweet us out a picture of that, we're trying to gather yeah. as many images of reuses bottles as we can. Yeah, we have a uh, th there's a daycare in Oklahoma City that is 
uh, using them for terrariums for their kids. They're making like really, really cool terrariums and stuff with the bottles. So all kinds of cool, uh, cool projects online you can do with it. That is cool. Steve, can you talk for a second? What does it mean when you say um, organic and fair trade um, for people who might not be familiar with those terms? What does that mean? So the the beans that we use are certified organic and fair trade, and those are specific ways that you produce the bean. So you have to treat the soil in a certain amount of way for the organic piece. You can't cut down trees, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, for the fair trade piece, it's more about amount of money that stays within the community that grows the coffee. So it's a lot more focus on infrastructure uh, at site where they grow it. So that's a very good thing. And then we also go through fair trade for our product itself. So. Now this might be an obvious question, but why did you decide to go that route? Because I'm sure that costs time and money and you would make more of it if you didn't do that. So what, what about your backgrounds led you to make that decision? Uh, I, you know, honestly, I've been in the coffee industry for you know, since '98, I guess, and you really begin to learn the disparity between growers and people that sell it in the United States. And it's it's just one of those situations where I can't know that people live in hovels that that sell me their coffee and they're barely scraping by. And here I am driving around in a car and eating well, and I want them to be able to get theirs just as much as I want to get mine. So I just like to play fair. I like that. Hey guys on Twitter, um, I don't mean to change the subject because obviously that's a very important topic, but I want to make sure our audience knows we are listening. Um, Sarah999 says, very interesting topic tonight on Kitchen Party. Thank you. She's been making coffee kombucha. Kombucha? Uh, isn't kombucha. That the, isn't, yeah. isn't kombucha. that the, uh, the, mu like the giant mushroom that grows from nothing? Yes, it's called like a mother. A yeah, I, yeah. I tried to do that diet one time, and I was not successful. I, you know, I'm not <laughs> successful at anything. It's ridiculous. And then she also said it's the same kind of vibe as cold coffee, but different. And then Mitch Jenkins looks and says, oh, at PCC, carries Chameleon Coffee in Seattle. Mm. And now yes. we've lost her for the rest of the hangout. Right. She's right. To the store. <laughs> Thanks yeah, a lot, guys. Gone, there's, so. there's an audience member just headed out to the store. <laughs> Stephen, you mentioned the, some of the uh, the blends and the flavor notes and stuff like that. And we all know the coffee can be just so, so in-depth when it comes to flavor profiles and acidities and uh, you know, add on more and more and more. <clears throat> right. What what were you looking for as you created this cold brew? What were you looking for that you wanted to come out in a cold brew coffee like this that you thought would obviously appeals to other people as well? Well... Honestly, I came up with the blend five years ago when I was opening my current coffee shop, and I just like the chocolate notes that you get from Highland Costa Rican coffees. This, this kind of gives it a sweetness on the very front end of the coffee, and then I just like it to be smooth the whole way through. So I really just went for blends of coffee that keep it smooth. Mmm, delicious. Yeah. Keep it smooth and keep it chocolatey. What are you pouring in there, Doug? Just some milk. Just, just milk? some milk. Just milk. Not no. I yeah. thought it was some Baileys or something. That yeah, would right. go it like Baileys. But no, it's just it's just milk. I'll, I'll try to show it off. Ooh, look in my fancy chameleon coffee uh, pint glass there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there's, there's some other special. There's some other yeah. stuff that will go on that pint glass. <laughs> what, on, what? on occasion as well. <laughs> Let's talk about this first flavor this is, here. That's the one I'm having is iced right now. What do you I'm think? Having, uh, it's very interesting because what I started off with the um, the, the original oh. as warm as a hot coffee today, which I hadn't tried it before. It didn't even occur to me. Oh, duh, just heat up some water and mix together. It's an extract. It's a concentrate. You can do that. Um, so I did that tonight, and that was definitely. It's very different. Even between the two, there are different flavor profiles here. Um, Douglas, do you realize how much caffeine you've had? Yes, I do. I, so I said I already told this is a 24-hour hangout. We are not sleeping tonight at all. I don't think um, I've ever seen you as animated. He's and... never talked this much at all on this show. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Let's go back to past shows here. Oh, no, no. He's never talked this much about stuff that no one else knows. Well, right. this, no, the fact is coffee right. is, is one of my dear loves, both to drink it and to, and I always say a geek in one thing, a geek in all things. So I'm sure Stephen and OJ experience this as well. You kind of yes. you're geek in one thing and all of a sudden it spills over into another thing and and it, it just sort of um, combines together and it kind of developed its own momentum heading forward. Yep. I'll see you on Reddit, Doug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> At about four in the morning. Right. Yeah, four thirty. Four thirty. 
Um, so the chocolate profiles, that's interesting because obviously there is, you know, chocolate and coffee has been a combination for such a long time. Uh, any other flavors that you look for? Uh, not in that original one. Like I said, I was trying to keep it smooth. I was keeping, trying to keep it chocolatey. That's, and those are mostly Central South American coffees. It's about a blend of five farms right now, looking for specific notes to blend together. Now, the wilder coffee comes from East, Eastern African coffees, which are some of the oldest coffees in the world. They tend to have more of a berry note on the front end, and as they travel across your palate, it tends to be kind of a wild ride, it, up and down and up and down and up and down. It's not real smooth like the original one. It seems smoky. Yeah. Right. There's always a lot of that. Yeah. It, it didn't seem... You know, there didn't seem to be a huge difference between the two, but I'm having one as I'm having the wilder one as ice still, and I think that may mute it a little bit. Uh, it could be, could be. Oh yeah, so you're doing one hot and one iced? Yeah. So, oh okay. <laughs> By the I gallon. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to be able to, to talk to taste a little bit. Um, sure. Now you actually mentioned in your on your website of tasting the the extracts, which I call extracts, tasting them au naturel, shall we say? Uh, without diluting them, um, I haven't tried that. But is that like an espresso, or, or what type of what? What are you getting from something like that? Uh, in a traditional cupping situation, you just spoon it and you you slurp it, and mm -hmm. it hits the back of your palate. So that's usually how I test them to see how they. Because the idea is that it gets up into your nose, and it also hits your palate as well. So that's usually how I try it. Steve, how do you I'm pick tasting. your farms? Because you said like five farms you're working with. Uh, that depends on flavor. So, say this month it rained a lot in this Highland Costa Rican farm, and it's going to affect the flavor negatively. We can, you know, move to uh, an area, say in Peru, where it's high elevation and it hasn't rained as much, and those notes are still going to be the same that we need. So we can pick from that farm. And honestly, all of that is from our roaster, Texas yeah. Coffee Traders. They're super awesome people. Great people. Have you so been to those places oh, like Coast, in Costa Rica and Peru? Have you been able to travel down there? I have not, actually. I'd like to. You have yeah, a buyer that uh, you have a, a supplier that brings the the beans into Texas for you to taste and for you to buy there. Or how do, how do you how do you manage your buying process? Uh, so, uh, like I said, I've worked with the roaster, so he handles all of that, and he goes to source and he'll travel and test taste the farms and try everything, and so he he pretty much handles that end of it. Oh, that's a pretty deep relationship to have with another business. I, has that, yeah. Have you worked with the same roaster the whole time? I've been with him since 98. Something that you develop a similar taste. He knows what you're looking for, so right. therefore he can provide that. That's very exactly. important with any relationship like that because you've got to be on the same wavelength to ensure that cool. the product you're getting is, is in tune with what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. hey, There's a lot of hugging when we meet. Uh, hey Jeff, you haven't been able to chime in because your audio stuff. Anything? Did you want to add anything to the uh, conversation so far? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. You also hear me from Orlando in the background. So I apologize. <laughs> uh, you know, I was wondering. I, I had a hankering to kind of make like a, a coffee milkshake. I wondered if I could use cold brew in like a cold situation. If that would make uh, for a good like uh, milkshake ingredient. Yeah, I have this. I oh, love yeah. love coffee milkshakes. Um, I think it all started with Arby's Jamocha shake when I was a teenager, right? So. Uh, oh <laughs> uh, man. Yeah. Um, Bringing back I, memories. Oh man, I I'm obsessed with this one recipe right now. We use uh, a local uh, Austin company as well called Natamu. They have a dairy-free coconut ice cream. So, uh, and their chocolate flavor with our chameleon, and then a spoonful of almond butter is. Insane, like it it's is really delicious. Really, yeah, we tried to shoot a video making a recipe and ended up getting in a fight over who was going to finish the sample. So <laughs> it was really, really, really good. Um, really, really delicious recipe. So. Can we see that video any place? <laughs> uh, maybe outtakes at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Like that was that was really intense. There was a dance fight to settle everything. So it was Ooh, dance really off. Oh, yeah. I like that. It was good. <laughs> I noticed that you had a Nutella recipe too on the on the uh, website. Yeah, yeah. Was, Anything Nutella all all day. It was it was like a website called a peanut butter cup. Basically, it was a, it was a mm. coffee with Nutella and then peanut butter and I, maybe something else. Yeah, that is actually our CEO Chris. That's his favorite recipe. So uh, yeah, that would be mine too. Yeah, I'm, 
Peanut butter, chocolate, Nutella. Oh, yeah. I'm all over that. Yeah. I'd be okay with just a spoonful of Nutella to eat along while I'm drinking the coffee. That's a delicious recipe as well. So right there. Love, right there. Love the lonely Fridays. Oh, they, oh, it's good. Yeah. Lonely Fridays. I like that. Oh, dear, I like that. Right lonely the uh, with uh, St. Patrick's coming up, is there a recipe for Irish coffee? Oh, I didn't catch that. Okay. Oh, he said, oh, God, Renee, were you going to say it? Is there a recipe I'm sorry. For I, I said that uh, with St. Patrick's coming up, you have a recipe for Irish coffee. Uh, I mean, my current favorite, uh, you know, I guess, alcoholic coffee or coffee cocktail uh, is we actually freeze the chameleon into ice cubes. Uh, and because it's cold brewed, it doesn't change the flavor profile. And then you just pour Jameson right over the top. So uh, two ingredients and super delicious. So, also, can more I, lonely Fridays. Can I can I get a <laughs> woohoo? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, my mouth is hanging open. Oh my god, it's that's so good. Awful. Yeah, yeah I taught him that recipe Jack and he's missed work several times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, some sometimes at work, you know, they're just having rough days. You know, you need something to get through the day. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Tuesday morning recipe. Hey, just want to tell you guys, on Google Plus right now, we have Mich Michelle Green is watching. She tweeted out that, or she posted out that we were going to, that we were on air. And then Mitch Thank Jenkins you. also loves the milkshake idea. She's like, oh my God. Yeah. So I think we're striking, we're definitely striking a nerve. You know, I just, I just poured myself a little bit of the earthy coffee. Can you tell okay. us a little bit about um, what's the difference in that one? So with the earthy coffee, it's an uh, Indonesian blend of coffee. And their coffees, it tends to be a wetter environment, so they're a much earthier flavor. Earthy is actually one of the flavor notes. that uh, They're called Q graders. They're, they're like the wine sommeliers that taste wines. These guys taste coffee and tell you these are the notes in this coffee. Uh, earthy is one of the notes that I was going after with this specific coffee. And, it, and it, to me, it's a very heavy flavor. Uh, it's a very deep flavor. It's a very bold flavor all the way throughout the palate. So... You know, I think I like earthy better than I like wilder. Yeah, that's what and, I'm talking about. <laughs> is that because I'm an addict? <laughs> no, no, it's never. It, it, this is the one disagreement Steve and I have, and it just shows you how like different everybody's uh, taste buds are. But uh, So I fell in love with the original and got super hooked, but when we uh, started sampling the wild, like that is by far like my favorite coffee on the planet. It's, it's that's different. why we're out right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we're in different houses because we cannot sit <laughs> together and talk about the different flavor profiles. So, yeah. hey, yeah, Renee, did the, you try it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, oh, Douglas. No, the, the earthy is, is, is quite different from the other two. I just mm -hmm. threw some in my mixing cup at the moment. But um, well, that's, I love yeah, how yeah, Douglas different. is actually drinking from a measuring cup. Because <laughs> I'm not in my kitchen. That's the only trouble. I have a lousy <laughs> internet in my kitchen. And I would love to do this in my kitchen. But I'm sitting here at my computer desk basically trying to do all this stuff. And I realized I hadn't tried this one. But this one, is, this one does strike me as being quite different from the other two. We, we should also let Steve and OJ know that um, while it is called Kitchen Party, um, the only one who usually shoots from their kitchen is Jeff. And since Jeff is at a bar, we're going we're we're gonna to okay him. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to give him a pass this time. Uh, kitchen and I'm near a kitchen. You're near a kitchen, that is true. Yeah. Very, very true. I'm just amazed, Jeff, that your Wi-Fi is working great. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going good. Yeah, other you than can, the uh, you can thank Mr. Mickey Mouse for that because they have excellent Wi-Fi here in the office. <laughs> I awesome. I like the um, um well I like them all but I do like the Wilder coffee. I thought I would actually use it in some cooking recipes instead of uh, espresso because I feel like there's a, a there's something in there that makes me think of espresso when I taste that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, the nose, uh, like before you even take a drink, like I feel like it's just so much more full bodied than uh, a lot of the other cold brew coffees. And uh, so I could literally just smell that coffee all day. But I've used it in a red eye gravy, and it has been fantastic. So, oh, yeah, yeah that, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I have a mocha brownie recipe that calls for um, just a touch of espresso. So I thought I would try that, a few yeah. tablespoons of that in there, and I think it'll, it'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah please good. send me that recipe. That would okay, be I will. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Hey, Stephen Otis, do, do you guys have um, do you guys have recipes that you guys can make a cookbook from? Like, could we could we help you guys make a cookbook cafe cookbook, and we can put it in our platform? I think that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I, I mean, know we. Oh, go ahead, Otis. 
All right, so I know we're constantly getting recipes from uh, from different customers all over the country, and uh, not to mention just trying tons of it because that's how we go through 100 gallons a week, right? So we have to find all kinds of creative ways to drink this stuff, and so uh, and, or and or eat it. Maybe we could ask our uh, kitchen party viewers to also uh, maybe recommend some recipes. Maybe good. they could contribute as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Coffee yeah. recipes, that'd be We've great. We've had a lot of people have some success with barbecue sauce and uh, and adding the coffee to some barbecue sauces. So, uh, big big barbecue fans over here. So, if you want to send us some recipes, we will always try a barbecue sauce recipe. I make a pretty good uh, brine out of the earthy. Oh yeah. So, uh, pork and chicken mar uh, marinade for like half an hour in a salty coffee concoction. Oh. You throw in a few spices in it. It's delicious. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Coffee ice cream. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have an ice cream maker? Yes. That is awesome. I like how it's like, Coffee. yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I bought oh. the ice cream adapter for my KitchenAid. Oh, oh that's great. That Coffee great. floats okay. are also very good. Oh, yeah. Coffee floats are great. How would you do that? Just a scoop of your favorite ice cream and pour coffee over it. Oh. It's delicious. Oh. I'm so telling you, you can do anything with this. Yeah. Okay. Here, here goes your, here goes the accent for that. That's called a cafe affogato. Ah. <laughs> when we hear, yeah, when we hear an accent, we must drink. It is part oh, of the kitchen party is? rule. Oh, oh sorry. I we just, should have explained that up front, guys. They like to make fun of me on my phone. <laughs> I like it. I like now, it. Jeff, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say it since it's a cold brew. You know, it's not like when you make coffee ice cream, you generally have to kind of mix it and make sure it blends in with uh, all the cream and whatnot. It's already blended. You could probably make it into a coffee uh, sorbet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Coffee yeah, sorbet. because it's cold brew, you don't get really any of that bitterness or burnt flavor that people use a lot of cream and sugar to, to mask things. So, uh, in fact, Steve and I uh, get emails and Twitter uh, tweets from the fitness community a lot for using it in the protein shakes. Uh, because of the three times the caffeine and it being like non-caloric, uh, they absolutely love it, and it gives like their shakes a little bit of flavor without being that burny coffee flavor. So, okay, the key word there, Douglas, just so you know, is three times the caffeine. I, I know. I, I read. I read the bottles. I read the website. I have been prepared for this. You are a goner. You're like 4 a.m. Your wife is gonna hate us. No, I'm a night owl anyway, so it won't it won't hurt too much. You're gonna be so awesome productive. Yeah. That is what I need. I need to mainline this stuff like for about 40 hours, and I might get something accomplished in my day. Yeah. That's for sure. Your raid guild is gonna love this stuff. Oh. <laughs> let me see. Let me see if I can do a horde or. Oh, I'll get on the other side. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm a geek, but I'm not that hard of a geek. So I only that's the only one I can come off of the top of my head. There's two divisions in Warcraft, Horde and the other side. <laughs> so, Steven, OJ, how do you uh, suggest that people uh, prepare this and try it for themselves as ho at home as opposed to Doug, who's just like mainlining it? What, do you, how, <laughs> what ratio do you suggest? <laughs> I mix this in the proper ratio as according to the bottle, <laughs> gentlemen. Um, Honestly, I anytime that we're demoing, we're just pouring it straight over ice and letting people try it black first. Uh, a lot of the times, people like you said, Doug, uh, what you said when you do, you can actually drink this black, that happens to so many people. Uh, I was not a black coffee fan really until I started uh, drinking cold brew. So it's just usually so bitter, or you never know what you're going to get with a hot brew coffee. And uh, and this is so so smooth that a lot of people don't need to add the dairy or the sugar and would be really happy and excited to not have to. So. As someone who's undergoing weight loss right now, yeah, I could even the little bit of cream or, I, or you know or milk I put in my coffee, I could do without that. That'd be you know, 60, 150, 200 calories a day that I could take right. out of my diet. Yeah, yeah, I did not like because I was drinking tons and tons of coffee, and when I started doing the math of all the sugar and all the dairy that I was consuming in a day, it was some pretty terrifying uh, numbers. So it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and I've I've been describing myself lately as a two pot a day, <laughs> you know, oh, drinker. Goodness. You know, uh, only one caffeinated, uh, but you know <laughs> right. that's how I when I'm when I'm nibbly hungry. That's how I. Uh, tamp down the hunger is just have some coffee, which I also happen to love, so it works out really well. Okay, hey guys, I think Jeff has a question. Oh, okay. I'm just wondering how it is that you guys kind of sort of created this sort of 
be your own niche because there weren't really anybody doing it when you guys started it. And now it's like people are actually familiar with what cold brew coffee is. How did you kind of create the demand for yourself? Well, you know, honestly, I truly believe that this is an evolution in coffee. I feel like drinking it hot isn't as good as drinking it cold brewed. So I think it's just one of those situations where I've been cold brewing it for a long time and I finally got to a place where I could get it in front of a lot of people and people just love it. And so right. people are more and more people are converting it. It's kind of a, a consciousness right now. Like there's a lot of cold brew places that are starting to open their doors and try to sell cold brew. I, I think people are just catching on to the superior quality of cold brewed coffee. Right. Hey, it Steve. Probably, it probably didn't oh, hurt like for 10 years that cold, cold coffee drinks were popular at places like Starbucks too. Right, but they were doing it the, they were brewing it hot and then pouring it over ice generally. So. Right. right. Steve, can you yeah. talk about those two differences on uh, uh, those different approaches? The hot brew over ice right. versus cold brew? Yeah. Uh, so when you hot brew a coffee, you're melting all the oils and tannins into the end product, and those are the things that start to oxidize and get real bitter and kind of rancid tasting real quickly. But when you cold brew, the oils and tannins don't mix with the end product as well. So you get much less acid. It's like 70% or some crazy number like that, less acid in the end product. So those acids aren't oxidizing. And so it's just a much more stable end product, and it's just it generally is just much smoother because you have so many fewer tannins in the end product as well. No. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying. Uh, so from the vein, uh, like myself, uh, it, having no acid doesn't stain your teeth and won't uh, leave those coffee rings in your coffee cup as much. So uh, those are the things that were, you know, a, a nice surprise uh, later in life. So someone who drinks a ton of coffee like myself, not staining my teeth, not tearing up my stomach, those were life changers. So, And it yeah. saves your marriage and keeps your children honest. And right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cold brew is going to save the world. That's right. right. That's right. I see that. And I if see you now. Yeah. Your evangelism, I see yeah. it now. <laughs> and Doug, if you finish both of those cups, you'll have a superpower. I promise. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, you'll grow in. I'm already you'll starting to. to walls. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm already starting to get X-ray vision. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> now, now, Steve, since I, you know, I look at you guys as like a startup. You know, because I we're, we come from the startup world with BigSpace.com, and I mm -hmm. I know how difficult it is to get like a technology out there or to get people to to sort of buy into what you're doing. Um, what was the turning point for you guys? What was it that you kind of were like, whoa, this is really happening or this is, or, or, or did something happen that you turn the corner and you're like, this this is a business? Well, I mean, honestly, it was Bake Space that very first year. Oh, oh, I mean, that's really interesting. No, I'm kidding. I thought, I thought you were just—I thought you were <laughs> just plugging <laughs> yourself here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Prime, prime oh, the pump there. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, pat nice. yourself on the back uh, for that. <laughs> How did I mean, that happen? <laughs> we, we'd only been in business a couple months, and we show up at your place, and then Renee, what did you write in the paper? You like, I went to South by, and the only thing I liked was Chameleon Cold Brew. <laughs> It was like, what? We're in Austin. We're not in L.A. What is this? What's going on? We got into Oprah because of that. We got into Tasting Table and Daily Candy. and I didn't know that. That's awesome. I'm so happy you told me that. Yeah, TechMunch blew us up. It got us into Whole Foods. And as soon as we got into Whole Foods, we got into another region of Whole Foods. I mean, right, it just, yeah. it was the explosion. Yep. And we yep. greatly appreciate that. You're Babette welcome. The trendsetter. <laughs> Who had, the, who had the idea to contact Babette and just say, let's try to get it in there? Who, who thought of that? Gosh, I it was either Joni or Chris. I don't remember. Uh, Joni Ryan was doing uh, marketing for us right there at the very beginning. And it was either her or Chris found you guys on the South by listing. I, I honestly don't remember. You know, Steve, I think uh, we, just, we just had at the conference, we had Jade Monk. Who you guys know pretty well, uh -huh. the tea yeah. company, and it was funny because I, I, as I started talking to them, I was like, "Oh wait, you know Chameleon?" I was like, "That's different pricing. Let's make this happen." <laughs> like, you know, any friends of yours are friends of ours, and that's oh, sort that's of the, great. the philosophy that we that we stand by. And so I was like, "Oh, more Austin companies come this year, come this year." So we've had a, we had a great time with them, and I'm so happy that you guys were there this year as well. Um, Me too. What, it was a lot of fun. 
how do you guys, uh, thank you, how do you guys, you know, you went from like making small batches to making large batches. How did you figure that out, what you needed to do? Uh, it was a lot of just time and effort, you know. It, it's interesting as you scale the batches up, you wind up using less coffee per water ratio. We didn't know that the first big batch we did, so we had some really strong coffee that first time. <laughs> And we did not so, get some samples? It, <laughs> it was illegal. It was technically illegal. You didn't so, want those samples. So. And and I didn't want those samples. <laughs> Van Nuys, California, 9 one oh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that actually, you talk, to go back to, to the tech munch thing a little bit too, what, what other ways do you reach out to people? Because obviously with a food product, the, the way you convert people, the way you, you develop buyers is letting them taste the product. So what types of things do you do besides, you know, thankfully... Sending some to us, uh, you know. What do you do to, to to do some outreach for your product? We do a lot of demoing in retailers. I mean, a lot of demoing. But since it's an emerging, uh, since it's an emerging category, nobody really knows anything about cold brew at this point. You've got to get them to try it, and that's the only way to catch them. And that's at the stores like Whole Foods and stuff like that, or, uh -huh. or elsewhere. Yeah, we'll hire someone, set up a table, and everybody that comes by, be like, here, try some cold brew. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, just on Twitter, I want to let you know, Mitch Jenkins has a question. She says, how long can you reasonably, actually this is good for us to know, can hmm. you keep cold brew in the fridge? Mm, good question. Once you've opened We've it? We've never found the end. Uh, I mean, has it ever lasted that long? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> why would you have it more than two days? Yeah, it seems like you're doing it wrong. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead, so we have a 150-day shelf life from the day of production. So that's what's date stamped on the top. And then once you open it, it's good for about two weeks, maybe three weeks. Yeah. It doesn't spoil, it so it's not long. like dairy. Yeah. But, you know, but it will change the flavor profile. It will not last that long, 100%. I'm guaranteed. Yeah. Except now I have three bottles, and I'm not sure how fast I will drink. This one is going to kill me. This, this one is like, this is bigger than my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think Any that's my... Sorry, morning coffee for the next for the next week. I think for the next five like the rest minutes. Of the week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Steve, how much would you say? Like, I I probably kill about a thirty-two ounce, like one of those big bottles a day. So I'll do I'll do this in a day. Is you go through quite a bit yourself, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Built up there. I'm sorry, Winnie. You had a question. Uh, uh, any suggestions for um for for freezing this? I, when I one of the things I do not like about iced coffee is when they pour coffee over just regular ice and then it gets like kind of all watery and yucky um, but I'd like to try freezing this in some way so then I have frozen ice cubes of it any suggestions on how to do that or is that not a good idea a good idea yeah, what just, do you think just pour it in your ice tray and yeah stick it in so create the ratio that you recommend and then put that in the ice the ice tray yeah yeah um, and you, usually I don't, uh, I won't even water it down when I'm doing ice cubes because I'll be adding something to the ice cubes as a drink and that will kind of water it down or cut it. So like mm -hmm. if I'm doing the coffee cocktail with Jameson, for example, then, uh, then I'll just do straight chameleon because it'll, it'll slow release over the, the time of the drink. So it's good. I like the way you think, brother. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be real good friends. Really good friends. Uh. So, quick question: we we're, were supposed to water these down? Uh. <laughs> oh, so you've been laughing at me, uh huh? Who's gonna be up all night now? But Beth I, and Doug are gonna be texting each other all night. <laughs> no, no, I I mixed mine according to the ratio marked upon the edge of the bottle. Thank you very much. Okay. I fail at gardening. I fail at composting. I fail at drinking coffee. I give up. I give up. No, no, you Is didn't fail. Else having trouble blinking right now? Is that really hard for you? You, you didn't fail. You just suddenly graduated to the oldest level of coffee consumption. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Well, what's next for Chameleon? Oh, well, oh, I mean, there's still so world domination days. we're working on. Right, right. <laughs> Jumping um, to the moon, I think. Got to jump to the moon. Right yeah, and we'll get there. I mean, we only sleep an hour a day, so yeah, we, yeah. Should, uh, we should be catching up pretty quickly. Now, so. That certainly helps productivity, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you got 23 hours in your day to actually right. do something with it, yeah. I mean, the flavor, the new flavor profiles are the big, uh, big next step for us, right? To release um, these new flavor profiles. So many cold brew coffee companies, uh, whenever they are releasing new products, um, have gone the way of uh, adding flavors. You know, adding vanilla or mocha, which is. 
great. Lots of people love to enjoy their coffee that way, but that's not how people usually buy their coffee. Like whenever you're buying it in bean form, you're buying a Sumatran blend or a breakfast blend, and, and that's how, uh, you know, you, you can get so many new flavors just from doing different beans or different roast, and that's what we want to really like elevate the coffee conversation and release it that way. So. I, I like to think that's where you start. You start with the natural flavors that are already there, and then if you right. decide you want some vanilla, you decide you want some coffee, sure. you decide you want some, then you know leave that up to the. Now you can help people do that. Obviously, you can help. I mean, it's something that I link all the time on my blogs and website, or you know, flavored syrups and stuff to be added to sure. stuff if you want that type of flavor. But certainly, I know in just tasting these three, there's a, there's different profiles right here already that you've already got, right. and I I would tell people. Again, you you need to find people who actually like coffee and not milkshakes like you get at most coffee bars. Right, right. Uh, but there is certainly a lot of flavor there to be found just right from the, the beans themselves. Right, and you can do it without adding, like one of the great things is there's two ingredients. It's organic coffee and water, and that's a very not intimidating label to look at. And so uh, we'd rather not have to have this long ingredient list whenever you're, you're drinking your coffee. So do you benzenomate hydrobromide right, exactly. dimonohydroxide. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was diagnosed with uh, celiac disease about four Ooh. years ago, and, uh, and it, may, it forced me to start reading the ingredients on all the food that I took, and that was probably the most terrifying experience of my life because it was anything that I didn't recognize I couldn't eat. So it was, I guess I'm gonna have a tomato for the next. I, there's no ingredients on this tomato; it should be fine. So yeah, it's it's really scary, uh, scary stuff. They often hey guys, say, oh, the the fewer ingredients, the better. So yes, Babette. Douglas, I have proof that you've had too much coffee. Yes. You spilled Renee Lynch's Twitter handle with two L's. You know, like, oh, 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 oh that's no, a, that's no, a copy. no, girl. No. No. Oh, my God. What have I done? Uh, no, that's a copy and paste error, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I and I've probably done it. On the copy and paste. Here, there's, there's the correct one. What's funny uh, is it took you three weeks to notice that because I'm sure I copied and pasted the uh, thing over the last three weeks. So just I saying. It's the coffee. It's the, I'm, a little, no, I'm alert. It's not the coffee. It's not the co oh, you're you alert. Yes, I understand. Coffee. You mentioned a coffee syrup. How might we make a coffee syrup out of this? Do you think if we like maybe put it in an open container with maybe some cheesecloth over it and let it sit out a little bit to evaporate, could we get kind of a natural syrup without reducing it over heat? Or what do you think? Steve, yeah, this is all you. Maybe, maybe? sure. And then maybe <laughs> add some add some sugar to it to kind of make a simple syrup. Yeah, what do you think, that, Doug? that would work. Man, um, the, we're constantly experimenting in the lab uh, and trying to come up with new uh, new creative uh, things for coffee. And we've got some very wild experiments out there right now, but none of them are syrup based, really. So okay. I'm yeah. gonna get on that. I'm gonna get on that. All right, yeah. Let us, know. let us know what happens. That sounds awesome. Do some, and I'm, gonna, uh, yeah, go I'm gonna put Doug on it. <laughs> Well, now, one That's thing nice. I do first see is I, I think the un, the unmixed concentrate would be a kick-ass starter for a homemade batch of Baileys, uh, an Irish cream. Uh, Wait, are you start with the concentrate, it's the coffee, and, and yeah, that would, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and it's such luscious. I love this group. This is fantastic. You know, we, we're not luscious. We simply geek out about various right. food-based items. Sure, <laughs> sure. sure. Spe speaking of luscious, do you think it would be okay to put some Jack Daniels over that instead of Bailey's? You think that would? I mean, uh, instead of Jameson's, you think that would work? Because I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> Matt, if, if you yeah, if you're from Kentucky, I think that would be fine for you to have <laughs> over your coffee concentrate there, Matt. Yeah. Does that mean we have to drink? Cause yes, she's drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for paying Thank attention. You for bringing it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for keeping us on point. <laughs> I'm now, very focused right now. now Steve and OJ, I'll let the lushes continue on. Um, what, three tips for people who are thinking about starting a food business. Ooh. Any advice? Ooh, uh, I, you go first, Steve. I, I've got a couple of them well, there. Yeah, <laughs> you do five tips. How many tips do you want to do? Well, the cornerstone of all the businesses I've ever started are you make a great product, you treat your employees with respect, and you treat your customers with respect. And if you do those three things, you're going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Ultimately, that, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, we... We love demoing our product. Like I, we both drink the Kool Aid or the coffee, if you will, right? <laughs> so, 
Uh, so we love, we're really passionate about it. We love talking to people about it. And um, when you're passionate about something, then uh, it's going to rub off on other people. So that's been, it's been great. We get to meet tons of great people, and people love coffee, and they tend to like our products. So that's nice. Now, I want to show you some folks some photos of uh, the South by Southwest trip, but I want you guys, can you guys stick around for a couple minutes just while we show some pictures and you guys can, you can interject? Yeah. Okay, great, because then, yeah, I'll, then I'll be like, where did I take that picture? And you guys may know. Um, yeah. But before we, before we kind of move on to that for a second, do you guys want to tell us where we can find you online and where people want to go if they're going to look for a, um, if they're going to look for you guys, how can they find a store locator or... OJ, you got to yes. plug our show, dog. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Steve and I are embracing the fitness community, and we are uh, evolving our lifestyles, just like our, our tagline, Coffee Evolved. And uh, so we've started this kind of reality web series that is uh, very fitness-based. It's a lot of Steve and I crying um, in the fetal position <laughs> while people work out around us. Uh, so, yeah, if you can imagine, like, <laughs> Olympic athletes and hard bodies and just doing these amazing exercises and panning out to Steve and I just like throwing up and texting our moms like that. <laughs> That's kind of how the show works out. So it's a lot of fun uh, and, uh, and definitely embarrassing. Uh, but you know, you'll be able to find that and all that footage on our YouTube account right now, uh, which is at Chameleon Coffee, uh, as well as that's the same as our Twitter handle, at Chameleon Coffee. And then Facebook is Chameleon Cold Brew. So that's great. And then obviously Chameleon Cold Brew on Google+. Plus, You can find us there as well. So, uh, so that's kind of the big, the big ones for us. We've also got a Tumblr account. Uh, it's uh, Chameleon Cold Brew as well. So find us on all the, the social media online. And usually Steve and I are the guys that will be responding to you. So if we get into like a, a back and forth, we'll try and sign our names. So you know who you're talking to. <laughs> Awesome. I want to compliment you for a second on your social media because um, I think you guys do a great job of connecting with your audience in a way. I, I think it's a tough balance for brands to um, reach out to people without it constantly becoming self-promotional, you know, because that right. just gets tiring after a while. Yeah. And um, uh, I don't know precisely who is behind all of those tweets over the over the years since um, uh, since Tech Munch, but it's you guys do a great job of striking that balance of connecting with people instead of just preaching at them. Yeah, um, I mean, you. I've been doing marketing for a long time. Steve's obviously owned his own business for several years, and we hate, hate businesses that are doing the, you know, 99 cents, 99 cents types of advertising, and uh, we really genuinely like our customers as people. Like, they seem to be into the same kind of stuff that we are, so... Uh, if we can share something that we found that was cool on the internet that wasn't, um, you know, not necessarily promoting our product, then it's like, hey, check this out. We're into it. We think you might be into it. And that's just kind of been our voice for, uh, for a while now. So. Well, I think that builds a lot of audience credibility. How did you guys come up with the name Chameleon? Where does that come uh, from? Interestingly, uh, right after Nestle bought Sweet Leaf Tea, the lead lead uh, artist from there named Craig Steckbeck was just trying to decide if he wanted to stay in design or not, and we hired him to pitch us a few ideas, and he came up with Chameleon in that this coffee is going to blend itself into your life like right. a chameleon. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, literally we meet so many different types of people from, you know, uh, ranchers and guys that run organic farms here that are just some real Texas good old boys that that drink it one way and these young hard body CrossFit people that that drink it a different way but in the protein shake and they all love the product and they feel like it's created exactly for them and we never have the heart to say yeah no uh, we it was definitely for you you know <laughs> so uh, uh, it, it's just been it's just been great everybody embraces it in their own way and it's very versatile I think that's one of the the, um, the great things about it hey Jeff do you want since you just chimed back in first of all what were you doing away from the computer I gotta know <laughs> drinking well, was drinking <laughs> uh, they actually have a, uh, they have this dinner at this place called Rack the Girl, which is an Irish restaurant bar, and they, uh, they have this, these two Irish chefs over here, and uh, one of the things they just did was a rack of spring lambs with uh, various cottage lamb pie, which is pretty much kind of that, it's like that, and then uh, they also did some corn fresh vegetables and some uh, Boys cook potato. Uh, I gotta tell you, this is it's an amazing thing to kind of find out that uh, Irish food has a little more variety to it. It's, uh, it's an incredible restaurant if you ever did that there in Ireland. What is the name of it, Jeff? 
it's called Raglan Road, and basically it's a, uh, a replica of an identical bar and restaurant up over in uh, Dublin. Uh, and it's, uh, there's a celebrity chef, Ireland's big celebrity chef, his name is Kevin Dundon. He owns both restaurants, and he's here tonight actually cooking uh, the menu. Oh, wow. And uh, he's here about four times a year, and he just does amazing food using, um, you know, sort of indigenous Irish uh, uh, ingredients. And he's, a, he's a fantastic chef. Awesome. So, Renee and Douglas, do you guys want to add anything before I switch to the photos? Because I don't want to... I don't want to stop the conversation for for dumb photos that I took. No, no just, I quick, just a quick thank you to uh, just a quick thank you to Stephen and Otis and uh, and uh, show off a little bit of their uh, part of the country. Yeah, thank you, yeah, guys. yeah. You're welcome, to Austin. Anytime, just don't move here. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 just kidding. I'm uh, just kidding. Just stay. Y'all can road. come and visit. Yeah, uh, you think about staying. Uh, That's traffic true. is already so bad, so bad. You can come oh, here if you only have a bicycle. True. So. You know yeah. that is so true. I was shocked. And we yeah. we we uh we flew home through San Antonio and I was like, "Oh, let's go down the 35." And it was bumper to bumper. And I'm yeah. used to LA, you know. I'm like, Ooh. "Holy cow, this is ridiculous." Uh, yeah. but the inside the main town is not so bad. Like if you're not on the freeway, it seems like traffic is it moves better. So I just got to the point where I was like, "Let's just cut across 45." Like, let's just <laughs> Let's just oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was but trying bad, to learn like a local. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some definite local back roads that people don't know about. That, Except that I heard that um, no one calls it the Mopac, or no one calls it the One. Do you got? Oh yeah, it's, no, it's, it's Mopac. It's, yeah, it's Mopac. Not one. Because I was like, go to the one, go to the one. Everyone's like, I don't know uh -huh. what you're talking that's about. Not, that's not even a real thing. <laughs> what do you mean? So. Well, well, for those of you who are watching at home, I'm going to go through some pictures of my South by Southwest trip, which we also produced Tech Munch. The first picture Melody should have, our producer is Melody. She should have our cameraman on. So hopefully, I don't see the screen change, but hopefully it will change. Uh, the first picture I'm seeing is uh, me drinking. That's great, and it's just my hand. It, it was a Bushmills cocktail that was served at a Dell party where they had this group called Matt and Kim. Has anyone ever heard oh, of them? Oh, yeah. We're okay. friends with them. I actually you met guys, them one time. I gave them chameleon. I saw your tweets. <laughs> cool. Well, they were insane. I have, I have a short video that is going to blow your mind. Okay, let's see what's the next one, Melody. Let's see if she changes. Oh, that's basically, okay. In Austin, it's like they have these cute little like um, dinner areas that are all trailer parks, but it's not like trailer parks in Los Angeles where like the truck drives to you and it randomly goes different places. These are like small communities that like six trucks will all be in like a little area and they have cute little tables and chairs. Now Steve, do you guys do you guys eat? I mean, do the locals eat at these places all the time or is it just me? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh no, we, yeah, the locals yeah. do. Yeah, we get a ton of really great talent from all over the country. There's a lot of people that have owned like these big restaurants in New York and have gotten sick and tired of dealing with it and so they come, they buy a $5,000 trailer and post up in one of these trailer park eateries. And uh, and we'll do like a completely different menu every single day, and just some really and just really rock some of the most amazing stuff. food. Yeah, yeah, all the best food in Austin has wheels. It's incredible. So by far <laughs> the best tacos I have ever had in my entire life was this thing called like East Side, East Side. I gotta look on my phone. King. It's called... East Side King. Uh no, it was at an East Side. East Side. What the heck is it called? I have to look on my phone. I'll look. I'll because I did take a picture of it, but it's not part of our group. Um, uh, where is it? Oh, East Side Filling. It's at the East Side Filling Station. Have you ever heard of that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's. I mean, it, that's where all the. Tra well, there's. That's one of the trailer park eateries on the East Side, right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. in the back, all the way in the back, is a taco stand. Delicious. And they have a sign that says, Rachel Ray says this is one of the 12 best taco stands in the country. Uh, it's Veracruz. Uh, oh, Veracruz yes. Taco. So, yeah. So, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> it <laughs> is delicious. Uh, very, oh, what very makes good, them so. so special? Tell me. Uh, I mean, so everybody is, everything is slow cooked at Veracruz. Like, it's, uh, it is definitely not fast food. Um, you can say, go pick up coffee down the street at 6 a.m. and smell the, the meat and everything roasting and simmering. So they're, they just do very, very high quality ingredients um, in a really simple, delicious way. So. 
Oh, I had like three tacos in a row. I was like, order more, order more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we actually went back there again. I was like, this place is delicious. I'm going back there every time I go to Austin. This right. next picture, um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's chocolate candied bacon. Oh. Two oh. slices of candied bacon dipped in chocolate and topped with smoked salt. Mm. And they were so Bacon out. is taken over. Yeah, it's all over. We have a restaurant called Bacon here in Austin, and it's mm -hmm. you know, amazing because it's bacon. So it's great. The Everything bacon infused better. whiskey is good. Oh yeah, Rhea Rita does a bacon infused whiskey, right? So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So does Frank. And mm. this was oh, yeah, also right. at the East Side filling station as well. And which, by the way, I did go and get something from there. Which, when I show you the picture, you're gonna all die. So melody forward a little bit. Let's see. Oh, this was really weird um, and kind of interesting because I like animals and I just thought it was cool but strange. They had on Sixth Street. They have this thing called like Lazy Cat or something like that, and basically Friskies has paid this cat that's like an internet no, no, meme. No, 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 no Grumpy, grumpy Cat, Grumpy, grumpy oh Cat, God. Grumpy you... Cat. Oh, God, don't okay. know your memes. Oh my <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, God. I don't know my memes. <laughs> I don't know my memes. No, it's okay. No, <laughs> okay. Grumpy Cat is gonna be unhappy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. I was, I thought it was Lazy Cat. <laughs> no, no, he's Grumpy Cat because he looks so grumpy all Sleepy the time. Cat. And this dog, they had video in the windows. So the, yeah. the cat was like looking at you. And I was like, what is this? And I heard that people spent three hours outside trying to take yeah. a picture with this cat. Yeah, oh my he God. was at the Mashable house during Interactive all, uh, all south by. And there was a line literally around the block the entire time he was there. So he where melts is, the internet. So he mel <laughs> I was like, yeah. where's the animal? People who help people who the PETA have... of the world. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't... yeah. <laughs> I mean everybody loves him, so I feel like it's kind of a good thing. So yeah, it's not like just... you're not like you're gonna eat him. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. They just want to come give him a treat and tell him they worship everything he's ever done. So. No. Ridiculous. <laughs> I need to get my dog or my cat on that that bandwagon. That was Friskies who did that, which I actually have the Friskies app, and it's a funny thing. It's an app that allows you to um, communicate with your animal. It's strange, but I tried it. It's interesting. Now this you can is the also program. communicate with your animal if you drink a whole bottle of Chameleon in an hour. Like you, you'll <laughs> be able true. to read their thoughts. You know, well, I'm so. I'm alone at home right now, and I kept hearing voices. That explains yeah. it. It's yeah. the darn cat. That's There's it. No way. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, this is one of my favorite pictures from Tech Munch. Uh, Driscoll Berries was a was one of our key sponsors, and they built their sign made of food. Now, how cool is that? Ooh. It's a great idea, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. Are those oh. what are those blackberries or blueberries? Oh, that's you know what? They actually do have blackberries too inside the bowls, and everything was like biodegradable, and it was very it was very eco friendly. But I just thought it was beautiful what they did. Yeah. Uh, Melody, you want to go to the next one? Because I want to make sure we get through all these. Next okay. slide, please. Yeah. No. <laughs> this was oh, a wait, very keep funny. Moving. This was a very funny story. This was after Tech Munch, and it was like the first drink that I had of the night. I had the drink. Ter it was terrible. My girlfriend had another drink, awful. And I'm like, this, who, 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 who? I looked at the bartender. I'm like, I don't even think he looks old enough to bartend. And then I went into the bathroom, and a woman told me that this was their first night open. And I was so wow. discouraged. I was like, what? So, where did you go? Yeah, uh, it was on. Gosh, it was on. God, you had our number. We could have shown yeah, you all what is those going on. places to drink. Ridiculous. I'll have you to would not have remembered was. the last part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you would not have pictures if we took you out. Or at least not ones we could show. Yeah. Melody, move, move on, move on. <laughs> Okay, this was kind of cool. We actually did a Google Hangout during the conference. So we showed how the food bloggers can leverage video by hosting a Hangout where one of our, um, Stephanie Manley went down to the store, and you don't see her in this image. This is when we were setting it up. But she went down to the store and she interviewed someone at Whole Foods to talk about, like, how do you tell when these berries are ripe? Um, so it was very cool to kind of be able to, to you know, we love this platform so much, but it was really fun to be able to, you know, put it into the conference as well. So, Melody, forward. Is video big on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, look at my friends, my friends, my you can Hello. Hello. Yeah, YouTube That's a sexy channel. picture right there. <laughs> Which, I got to tell you, I was so bummed. I was in so much trying to keep on time and trying to get everything organized. I didn't have one cup. I feel so bad. We had to bail for that uh, Tumblr party, so we yeah. had to leave early. 
No, I just felt yeah. like I, I turned like I, I don't know why I just didn't grab one. How many times did I pass by you? We left a bunch behind it? on the counter yeah. for you. I think yeah, those I weird did. monsters in the suits oh. took oh. them. Like, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the fuzzies that were we all did. walking around. We did. Eric, so, Eric's was... like, my boyfriend's like, uh, oh my god, but at one point during the conference, I was nervous for your people because I looked out the window and there were these like eight foot tall like Pokemon <laughs> running yeah. through the hallways. He's like, very what? weird. No, were they really on. there, or were you just... No, they were there. They were there. <laughs> they were there. Never be able to answer that question. Yeah, right. well, that was a blur of the day. <laughs> Melody, move forward with the picture. Give me a little beeper. Melody! I think we've lost... We come She's to the passed end out. Of the she has Melody. hit... She has tried <laughs> the chameleon cocktails. So, okay. oh, these are great. Yeah. This is the Sticky Toffee Pudding Company. Delicious, oh. delicious, delicious. I have to tell you, I did not eat enough of that, but it looks really good. Mm. So, it was very good. So, if you're in Austin, make sure you check them out. Now, this was, uh, this was uh, one of the giveaways that KitchenAid did. I love this color. Is that turquoise? I, mm. it's, it's really pretty. Yeah, oh, it's this like is my a, blender. It's kind aqua, of a turquoise. Aqua, more turquoise. Oh, it's oh beautiful. Gosh, beautiful. It's, it's, it's almost Tiffany blue, but not. It's it's it's, it's beautiful. It's actually Ooh, gorgeous. It's got a little sea foam. So. A little bit, a little bit. All right, Melody, forward. A little mauvey shade of mauvey pink or something. <laughs> okay, here are the uh, the bitch beer women. Remember we had them on the show? They were talking about drinks. On the left, there's a guy... Uh, Jake, who uh, works at a brewery, and then all the way on the right is the Whole Foods, uh, one of their wine guys. He's responsible for, um, Devin is responsible for doing a lot of their um, their wine buying. So mm -hmm. it was cool to like be able to connect with some of the folks from Kitchen Party in the past, so we really love that. They were adorable, by the way. Forward, Melody. Okay, I don't know why Captain Crunch was at, tech, it was at uh, South by Southwest. Why I don't not? know why. Okay, right. sure. <laughs> Everybody's at South by. That's why. <laughs> it, it was really strange. I was like, I looked over my to my right, and I'm like, what is that? And there, and people just loved him. People absolutely loved him. And then this guy, I was like, really, really. I mean, he's so weird and cool. I was taking a picture <laughs> at the restaurant, but he's just like, I don't, I don't know what he's on, but whatever it is, it must be good. He's that's on just, South by. Yeah, that's just regular Austin, though. That's like you see that on. That's Tuesday on your way to the laundromat. Like that's. <laughs> Isn't the city motto "Keep Austin weird"? Isn't that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's and this doing guy's a good not job. even that weird. No, he's he's, he's, he's fine. He's got kind of an Inuyasha vibe going on there, or something. Mm -hmm. Melody, yeah, he, forward. Sorry, what were we gonna say? He's a kitten samurai. He's good. He's so. a kitten. Okay. There is a place on I think it's Fifth Street or Sixth Street that's called Beat Cafe. Mm -hmm. Beats. Delicious. Yeah. Beats Cafe. Yes, amazing. This is by far the best bread I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, wow. huge gluten-free wow. menu there. They're really good to the celiacs, so they're great. If you're in Austin, this is a place to go. I just, I just stumbled upon them when I went out for a blow-dry for my hair, and it was delicious. In fact, I, before we went to the airport, I was like, why didn't I go back? Um, okay, now this is, I went to a food crawl um, that they put on, and this was interesting. It was bacon-wrapped asparagus. Now, I'm a vegetarian, so I didn't, I didn't eat it, but everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. Mm -hmm. Everything is better with bacon. How many times <laughs> Done. do we have it's, to say it? Tastes like freedom. And chocolate. Yeah. All right, Melody. Tastes like America. A bit of the vitamin P. Like <laughs> Red wine brew. It's America. That's right. <laughs> that needs some bacon. I don't even remember what this, <laughs> where I ate this. But all I know is I ate this, and it was delicious. If anyone yeah, can remember did. who ate this with me, let me know what this was. I, it was of some kind of bro Oh, you know where this was? This was at uh, Annie. No, no. It's like a little Annie's? Italian restaurant. No, it's um, like Frankie and such and such. It's Oh, Angie's. Angie's. Frank and Angie's. Frank and Angie's. Frank and yes. Angie's. I had that. Yes. That's what I had for my birthday. That was that was uh, We ate there for my birthday dinner and oh. um, had that dessert. So... You're one Happy of those birthday. people that the chefs are all angry about, aren't you? You're taking uh, pictures oh. of everything you ate the entire time you were there. I like do. They're you out the door. Get out. No taking pictures of my food. You go and, now. <laughs> and Jeff, Jeff no. thinks it's really funny. He says, you ate at Angie's List. That's funny. Uh, no. I, there you go, yeah. 
This was really good. This was uh, Amy's Ice Cream on South Congress. Delicious. Uh, this was made with Tito's. It was called The Dude. And I think it had, vodka, it had tequila yeah. in it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's or, their white Russian ice cream. Oh, but, it was so yeah. good. God. Do I people like, in Austin care. do yeah. anything but eat and drink? Uh, yes, we, uh, we take a lot of naps. I was going to uh, say, after we, all that eating we, and drinking, I seem to be We spend required. a lot of time in hammocks. So we play some Frisbee, some hacky sack. So Ooh, Frisbee cool. golf, right? Yeah. Frisbee golf? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I got you it. guys won't believe what this is. This, okay, I was almost embarrassed to order this, but I had to. I, I, but I thought it was going to be a little s'more when I ordered it, and then when they showed up and they started dunking the bread into, like, the batter, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be huge. Mm. This was a Nutella and marshmallow sandwich that was deep fried. Oh. Yeah, it was. I fell in love yes. that, that night. I fell in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone, yeah. everyone was asking me, like, what is that? What is that? What is that? And I felt like a pig. And mm. I had all these women who were, like, very pretentious, who they were not from Austin, by the way, who would right. look at me and they'd be like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, it's this, 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 and this. And they'd be like, and their, their husband or boyfriend would be like, do you want us to get that? And they'd be like, oh, no, disgusting. I would never eat that. And I was like, that's more to me, more to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're doing like it wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. Yes. What are you <laughs> doing with your life and you don't want this? I got to tell you, it throwing tasted, your life down the toilet. It tasted like a donut. It was light mm. and it was I was surprised and it was like white bread. Now this is me drinking again. So I think this is the this is the first picture where we started Melody. Yeah. I think she's going to show a quick video. Are you do you have the video open? Melody's getting the video open. Woo 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 woo. So what did I miss when I ate there? What did what did I miss? Oh man, so you, many you things. You missed a lot. I mean, I did not hear one time pork belly mentioned. I mean, no, I know you do. Uh, I know you do the vegetarian belly. thing, but it's like it's everywhere. And also, she prefers her pork belly still on. I did right. it at Franklin's, <laughs> but as a vegetarian, oh, you did. yeah. But okay. as a vegetarian, you get a different plate. Yeah, it's very like, different. Uh, you can't even get beans because the beans have right. like stuff in it. Now, I just wanted to show you guys this really funny. This was crazy. This was uh, Matt and Kim. She is on. She is standing on people's hands. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's see if it. And this was a this was a Vine video I did, so it's like six seconds. Look at that. She's standing. Up. Oh, it's really that's short, putting, Melody. That's putting trust in your audience. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I'm really standing up here on your hands. On my Facebook page, when we went and saw them, she did that, and I was holding one of her feet. And so, so one of my friends got a shot of her, like her butt is just right there. Oh. <laughs> it was it was pretty funny. You you weren't at the Dell party this the like, couple days ago, were you? No, no, no. no, no. Was, this was, this oh, okay. Because yeah. that yeah, there's no. someone who took a picture and they tweeted it, but they didn't know the right hashtag and they didn't know their username on Twitter. So I actually like corrected their tweet for them nice. so that they would oh. see it. It's the most amazing picture. Her butt is like. It's like J Lo redefined. She played the drums with her foot. Yep. With mm -hmm. her foot. They are awesome energy. So yeah, Melody, I think crazy. there was one more one more video. Okay, it's coming up. So basically the, at this party, this Dell party, they had these um they had this what is this called? Is this Jenga? Jenga. Okay. Jenga. Yeah. And this poor guy was like I mean he he took like fifteen minutes to be able to do this. This is a Vine video, so it's only six seconds. But so he did it. Let's see. Here it goes. He, he did it and he did it. And I kind of like, you know, like, uh, you know how Vine works, so you can add some stuff. Oh. And then oh, he walked away and did a little shuffle. And then two seconds later, this woman was like, oh, no. It was hysterical. Well, it may not be as funny when you don't hear them <laughs> laughing. No. I don't know why oh. Melody can't get the, get the audio. But we had a great time in Austin. We are definitely going to head back there. We may do some cool stuff next year. We'd love to get you guys involved in that as well. Some different stuff that we're doing. And I see my cat has joined me on, I don't know if you guys see her. She's like taking over LA. Yeah, it's like <laughs> monster <laughs> cat. <laughs> cat. <laughs> I don't have grumpy cat. I have nice cat. I have loving cat. I have And be cat. sure to stay tuned for Kitchen Party After Hours where we get to see all of Babette's <laughs> other videos <laughs> from South by Southwest. Yes. <laughs> Well, you, you guys were awesome, awesome to have. You guys were awesome to have as guests. And uh, will you guys come back to Kitchen Party if you have any other news to 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 join us? Yeah, yeah I feel like of we should just be here every time. So yeah, as long just... as you guys keep the drinks coming, this is going to be great. <laughs> so, well, Douglas is going to probably be awake until then. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to do three more shows tonight. That's just yeah. that's <laughs> you could totally start a band. Yeah. Ah. That'd be good. <laughs> 
Hey, Jeff, you got anything before we sign off? You want to say goodbye? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't participate no. more. I, uh, you know, obviously uh, enjoyed it. And I love the coffee, so uh, I, I promise to be more attentive next time. But guys, thanks for being with us. Tonight. You've been great guests. Oh, thanks for having us. We've really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Can I get Jeff one of those kind of you know stadium headsets, you know, like the sportscasters wear yeah. that are all blocked out, so he can be in the midst of all this and still still uh, talk to us. Right. <laughs> He's awesome. a roving correspondent. And now, yes, and now to our roving correspondent in Tampa. Hey Jeff, make sure you get some video <laughs> of get delirious doing something crazy or drulius, drulius, not delirious, drulius. Get him doing That's something drulius, crazy. Yeah. Delirious <laughs> yes. is a totally different person. <laughs> Very different thing. Very different. Delirious <laughs> is when I'm going to be at about one a.m. after this. <laughs> and tell him we will see him in Miami. Which is probably one of our next uh, stops, hopefully, to protect Munch. Um, well, thank you guys so much, Jeff, Renee. Awesome to have you guys as like our co crazy nuts people. Yay! Yay! I think we need more coffee. I think yeah. I'm going to get some more coffee right now. All right, they guys. Survive the show. Yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo! All right, guys, we will see you later. For those of you who are watching at home, stay tuned. Uh, next Thursday, we will be back, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Oh, my God, I love that. We should all start. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Stop it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys later. Remember, follow the hashtag Kitchen Party. Kitchen party. Woo. All right, guys, see you later. Bye.